agenda is. First item on the agenda is the presentation from the Center for Youth Leadership. Um, we have with us today Bob Casienda, who organizes it, and Roshni Yusuf. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. Um, who is one of the students, and I'm going to turn it over to them to introduce themselves and tell us what they want us to consider. Um, Prashni, is it okay if I go first? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, jump in. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Um, you have the one pager that we sent that lays out a timeline of accomplishments going back, I think, a couple of years. Uh, leading up to uh, legislation that was passed in May and signed into law in June by the governor. Um, that is specific to schools and it requires schools as of September 2023 uh, to have tampons and pads in, um, in school restrooms. The, 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 legislation, the, the legislation is a little awkwardly worded. Um, there, there was a working group that that established the, the legislation some of us disagreed with the extent of it. Uh, for example, they wanted it in every single bathroom, in every single school. And we agreed that it should be in every school. Um, we're not sure if it should necessarily be in every bathroom based on the configuration of a school. Uh, Brian uh, McMahon, hi, Brian, I'm sorry. I was just gonna interrupt. Would it be helpful if we put this on the screen? Uh, if you like. Um. Because it seems like that's uh, what you're talking about. And if we had it on screen, it, we don't have to have everyone. Give me yeah, a but then they're not hanging on my every word, Anna. Oh, OK. Sorry. I don't want to keep anyone from hanging on your every word. I won't put it on screen. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so, so we disagreed with, with the extent of the legislation, though we eventually signed on to it. Uh, when you look at the configuration of Brian McMahon, for example, it's essentially a big square on two floors, um, and you may not need uh, tampons, pads, and a dispenser in every single bathroom. No walk guy, however, you may. Um, those of you who are familiar with Stanford High, that, that's an unbelievably difficult school to get around, and, and definitely you would need it in every bathroom there. Um, but we did eventually sign on to the legislation because we thought it was important enough that we, that we compromise on that. Um, however, there is wiggle room because the legislation calls for the Department of Public Health, State Department of Public Health to write a, a regulation in support of the uh, statute. So we'll be working with them on that over the next year to see if we can craft something that is agreeable to, um, uh, to everyone. Um, and the issue behind this is basically an equity issue. Um, this uh, affects, generally speaking, uh, more girls than, than boys. And it would, re in, in many, many instances, requires um, those who menstruate uh, to leave a classroom, walk all the way to a nurse's office um, to get a tampon and pad, and then to find a bathroom to use it, especially a bathroom that's unlocked. Um, so um, it was an equity issue because there was a, a loss of um, academic, academic time in classrooms just to go get a tampon or a pad. And then a larger equation for this, Roshni, you may want to jump in on this, um, is the general use of bathrooms in, in schools. Um, McMahon did start a quote unquote bathroom committee. Uh, Roshni, did you want to jump in on that? And yeah, just give so, a brief overview. Mm -hmm, yeah, so I recently, like last school year that just ended, they had started a bathroom task force at Brian McMahon High School that I joined um, and was a part of. It, it only started like near the end, middle-ish of, of the year. So we really didn't get too many things to happen, but it was a good place for dialogue. And um, it was meetings with the principal, Miss Wood, talking about issues, including the tampon dispensers at, in, in the schools and other issues that may surround like equity issues with accessing bathrooms, et cetera. And yeah, I, we had spoken 
question about the tampon dispensers and unfortunately they didn't happen by the end of this year because in the legislation i believe it is supposed to be put in place um in 2023 so i mean as a student that was a little bit sad but i mean what can you do but yeah that's basically what the task force is supposed to do so i hope next year we can uh, tackle other issues having to do with bathrooms yeah and then and then fitting in with the tampon and and the dispensers in the bathroom is the degree to which every bathroom is open uh, so one of the ways that we're going at this is given the size, let's use McMahon as an example, the size of the building and the number of occupants on a daily basis, um, how many bathrooms by law must be open. Um, and we don't think high schools generally meet that, that standard. Um, so I know we're going to be working with the city health department, uh, buildings department on just finding out what those codes are um, and then going right administration and saying well you know every bathroom needs to be open by you know statute and and so on yeah, um, yeah. So, so so we're glad that we got that that statute passed we're really really excited about that um and then the next place we wanted to move to was uh taking a cue from ann arbor michigan was placing tampons and pads in the restrooms of public buildings in norwalk and we thought a good first place to start would be with the uh, with the commission. Okay. I see Sarah has her hand raised. Sorry, I'm going to stop sharing because I need to be able to see who is has their hand raised. Sarah, go ahead. Thanks. Hi, Bob. Hi, Rashmi. Sarah. Thanks for coming. Um, just, I just want to understand logistically for the school bathrooms, you said dispensers, um, do students have to like put a coin in or it's just like free access? Yeah, currently in the schools, the tampons and pads are free, uh, but they are only accessible, generally speaking, through the nurse's office. A, a given teacher may have them in his or her classroom, maybe the school-based health center does, uh, but they are free. Um, and generally through the school nurse's office. So they would remain free. Uh, we are negotiating for a dispenser. Uh, the, le the legislation does not call for that. Um, the statute that the governor signed um, just makes them available in bathrooms. And that's actually what Ann Arbor calls for as well. Uh, we spoke to um, an assistant to the mayor of Ann Arbor and their ordinance, which I think is a copied on the one page we gave you. Um, it just calls for them to be quote unquote placed in restrooms. Um, and so the representative from the mayor's office said, yeah, people usually use baskets or things like that, but a dispenser in, out in Ann Arbor is not required. And we're, also wait, and we're also waiting on a cost from them. Uh, they did not have that when we last spoke to them. Okay. Um, and then one more question is, I'm not actually uh, familiar with the um, availability of unisex bathrooms in the high schools. And so if there aren't, um, would they be available in both? Um, bathrooms the legislation calls for them to be in every bathroom regardless of gender okay thank you for clarifying yes and i think that i read on that the students are advocating for uh all gender bathrooms am i correct roshni oh yes that um like before the year ended school year um i also sat in with the spoke like the main group who was i believe they um uh, um presented a presentation to dr estrella about um why it is important to have all gender bathrooms at brad mcmahon and currently um those students who would like to access those bathrooms usually used uh, staff bathrooms but uh, apparently, you know, Dr. Estrella is on board with making all gender bathrooms happen. I, I don't believe, um, uh, I didn't hear much after the, the meeting, but yeah, that was an issue that the bathroom task force and that focus group did bring up to Dr. Estrella. Do me a favor, shut the fuck up. Uh, that was a uh, presentation that was made at Dr. Estrella's request to the Board of Ed, I think in May. Okay. Um, I thought that was really cool. I apologize for whatever just happened. 
Um, it should not have happened and it looks like it's already been dealt with. Um, I had some questions also. Uh, Sarah, your hand is still up. Do you have more questions or just, okay. Um, one, why do you prefer dispensers to baskets? What's the thinking there? When we did, uh, so, so CYL has been working on Center for Youth Leadership has been working on this for close to three years at McMahon and at some of our sister programs in Stanford. Um, and we met with administrators, we met with custodians who are actually the most important people in, in this because they have to keep, you know, refurbishing everything and, and putting in more tampons and pads. Um, and so we started out by using uh, baskets, we set up actually nice tables and so on, um, and they were trashed. Um, so we thought the dispensers would be a better way to go. Um, they will be, I think you have to jury rig them and such. No, you can actually buy them where you can, you know, the, the concern is that people may take five, 10, 15 at a time, and you can actually uh, buy those that, that you can just dispense like maybe three max. Um, and we thought that was the better way to go. We met with custodians. Um, it originally started in uh, the Fairfield School District. We hooked them up with um, the business, the super, uh, uh, deputy superintendent in charge of business. And that's how the ball got rolling in, um, in, um, in Norwalk. Okay. And my second question is um, enforcement. If you're asking us to advocate for a statute that would require dispensers in all public restrooms, one, what would be considered all public restrooms? And two, how would you envision that being uh, enforced? If you don't have ideas, that's fine too. I'm just wanting to hear if you do have ideas. Um, yeah, well, all we have to go on now is the experience of, um, of Ann Arbor. We don't know of any other city that's, um, that's doing it. And we're, I know Roshni, help, help me out here. We, we assume they would be, for example, in every restroom in the Department of Health, in City Hall, um, in any public buildings, at the beaches, um, in the libraries. Um, yeah. and, and so on. But Randy, are we missing anything, Roshni? Um, I mean, restaurants, um, uh, but definitely like, it's like public, like city buildings, I think would be, um, so definitely it's city facilities there. that we're targeting here. Correct. Um, yeah. I think Chantal has a question. Yes. Chantal? I, very, very interesting project, very nice um, and appreciated, but I'm wondering how long it will last if it's just completely free, if you don't have to put a quarter, will people, you, you will have kids that just for the heck of it empty, empty the dispenser out um, and, and not leaving, uh, not leaving tampons and pads there for others who need it when they need it. And in public putting them in the public places, that's great. But if it's free, what will it do to the budget of uh, the cities that reinforce that? Yeah, that we, you know, we came with less than full information for tonight and Arbor, as I said, did not have that information uh, for us. Uh, so once we get that, we would definitely forward it um, to you. Um, and, you know, the, the question about students taking them you know, it, it's an interesting debate because a lot of students do not have access to them over the weekends. So we're, we're actually okay with students taking more than they may need, um, you know, say on a Friday uh, when they're leaving school for, for the weekend. The whole idea is creating access for them. Um, so so we're, not, we're not that concerned about it. You know, will there be some theft, you know, you know there could be. Um, but I think we would cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and thank you. Also, I will start. I would like to add something. And, you know, it is interesting. Like, I, I th like a lot of the students, when we talked to Bob about this, we did bring up, like, you know, there probably will be people who, you know, take advantage of the access, but it is an interesting conversation to have. But I do know, like, Many people, when we do give out tampons, like on, we have like tampon Tuesdays where during the lunch waves, during lunch, we would uh, give out free uh, tampons and pads during um, school. And, you know, there are people who really, who take a few, m more than one, and, you know, they really need it. So it's definitely interesting. And and the other piece that, that we worked on at McMahon, um, and we will 
when we meet with the Department of Public Health for statewide um, implementation of this is that there's a huge education piece with it. Um, the idea is that we want people to talk about this openly um, because you know half the building at McMahon, if not more, uses them on a daily basis. Um, people just need to get comfortable talking about this um, and knowing that they're in the building and people use them. Um, so there is a big education component that we use um, where we provide information in addition to the tampons and pads. And I, you know, I, you know, and I guess we would assume we would do likewise, you know, when in city city restrooms. Okay. All right. Well, I really appreciate y'all coming out. Was there um, and any other information you'd like us to consider? Please forward to Michelle, and she'll disseminate to the rest of us. Um, were there any other questions for them, or any other things y'all wanted to say? I think Chantal and Claudia have their hands raised. Oh, sorry. Yep, they do. I didn't see hey, you. <laughs> I should have red hands or something. Chantal's might be from before. I don't know. She it looks like she may be off screen. Um, I mean, I, I can just jump lowering in. it, but it won't lower. Oh, 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 oh there you oh. <laughs> I'm here. OK. Um, so well, I could just so just quickly, I mean, I think when we have more information about what it would look like to try to propose slash implement this in city um, buildings. I think it might be worth, in terms of the budget, as someone just said, sort of looking at what a highly subsidized cost might be, right? Like if it were to cost a quarter, for example, or a dime or goodness knows what. But um, I mean, there's a lot, there's a long history of heavily subsidized public health commodities being made available to people in, you know, in development uh, practice and in other places. So there's actually like a, a, a value that's attached to it. Um, so I think it's just something for us to consider, um, not at the school, but in as we look at kind of doing this more broadly across Norwalk. Um, so we can look at that. I know we're still going to get more information, but just wanted to put that idea out there. And, and I know clearly one of the arguments that people would use is, well, the soap in the bathrooms is free. Uh, the toilet tissue in the paper in the bathroom is free. Why can't tampons be free? Yeah, I'm, so just to clarify, I'm not a proponent necessarily of putting a cost on it. I just think when we, if we're trying to make a point city government, then I think we also need to be aware of what you know, sadly, we know how costly the feminine products are, which is ridiculous, right? But it's just something I think we should consider and be prepared to either explain why, sort of how government can cover the cost or um, or have a proposal that does have a very negligible cost attached to it. Yeah, I, when we did this for uh, the schools, there was a cost analysis that we were able to do. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we were hoping to get from Ann Arbor. So once we get it from them, uh, we'll make sure we forward it to you. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that would be great. It would be, if you can share the cost analysis that you did at Brian McMahon, that would be super interesting to see as well. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I think Ileana had some questions. Yeah, so first of all, uh, Bob and Roshni, really thank you for coming over and presenting this initiative. I, I applaud you, Rajni, for leading this through a student body concept. Uh, my question to you is, have you guys done any research in terms of grants or funding, you know, coming from like, you know, corporations, like maybe that produce that type of products that we could probably tap into uh, as a pilot program to get started? Uh, and I ask because I know some of the, well, the budget on the city gets approved way ahead of time. So in order for us to put in a request like this, I don't know yet, like how long, how early we would have to do it for this to be implemented. So if you have any research that you can share from that perspective uh, that you could share with us as well, it would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, no, we, we'd we be happy to. And that's why the uh, legislation for the schools was delayed for a year um, because it was, it was signed into law in June and every school district had already set their budget for the coming school year. Uh, so they delayed it for a year to allow those school districts that hadn't done a cost analysis to conduct one. Thank you. No, that's that's very useful. And again, thank you so much for taking the time and coming and talking to us today. You're welcome.
Christina. Yes, I, yes, I, I echo the appreciation to have um, both students and teachers um, on the call bringing this to our attention. And um, one of the questions I had, and in, in maybe something I think, uh, Bob, that you mentioned might be in the Ann Arbor, is as we look to, exp as we, you know, talk about expanding this to the city to be a citywide um, project beyond the schools. Does that Ann Arbor work uh, include any cost analysis for small businesses? And like, I just, I wonder, you know, I, I think there's so many elements of that conversation and I think it, I think it should be done. I would like to see it done, but I wonder if there'd be um, not pushback, but just, you know, questions from smaller businesses that we would want to, if there is any data available, you know, outside of Connecticut that might be um, accessible to help us in the conversation. Uh, sure. Yeah, we we did ask them for the cost, and we did ask uh, for any any historical perspective on pushbacks that they got from any quarter in Ann Arbor. Thank you. Uh, she they, they laughed a little bit. They said, "Do you know how liberal Ann Arbor is?" And we said, "Yeah, we think we do know, but um, they, they didn't get a lot. But um, they were going to do some research and get um, and get back to us." Okay, got it. Um, and you should know too that um, the period movement um, yes. is now looking at at asking larger corporations in given cities to make tampons and, and pads available in their employee restrooms. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Sure. All right. I'm looking carefully to me. I don't miss any other hands up. Oh, nope, Sharon. Hi there. I'm so sorry I joined late. Uh, I had an emergency, but um, I absolutely love this. I want to say congratulations to all the kids that presented tonight. This is such important work, Bob. Um, your work's to be commended. Uh, you guys give me hope for the future, but personally, I would fully support our commission and joining you in on this effort. I think it's important. I think that this is a budget that is necessary and something that's long overdue. And uh, that's it. So thank you. Thank you. Christina, you're still up. Is that a new question or are you just, okay. All right, no one else. Thank you all so much for coming. It's always such a pleasure to hear from the Center for Youth Leadership. Y'all are always doing such good and excellent work and I really appreciate y'all coming out. And any further data we'd love and we will certainly take a look at the Ann Arbor uh, stuff and discuss. Great, thank you so much for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Roshni. Thanks, Bob. Great. So move, moving right, right along, um, can we have approval of the minutes from the previous meeting from May 16th, or are there any edits to the minutes? Okay. First, uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved, Christina. Second. Second. Second, Shannon. I think Yvonne beat you to it, Shannon. I'm <laughs> keeping score. So who gets the most motions wins something. Uh, any discussion uh, or changes needed to make to be made to the minutes? Okay. All in favor? Um, Say aye if you can't raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Say aye if you can't raise your hand and you're abstaining, just to make sure. Uh, Sarah, was that abstention? Oh, it was aye. Okay. The first one. <laughs> Zoom meetings. Okay. Uh, the motion carries. Great, thank you. Um, are there any members from the public who would like to give public comment? It doesn't look like there's any attendees. Aside from our bomber. Okay, so we'll move right into old business. Um, the first is uh, for reports of committees, the nominations committee. If you wouldn't mind giving any potential updates I don't think we have any updates, do we, Christina? <laughs> Christina are trying to connect, but 
The update our, is we're connecting. <laughs> exactly. Our update is we will assure you we have an update next time. Sorry about that, folks. No worry. Summer okay. and we've all got lives, busy mm -hmm. lives, most of us. How about the research committee? Yes, so we are, we have fallen victim to the summer in terms of finding a time to meet, but um, I do have something for the committee to take a look at. So since last time we spoke, um, Ileana and Sharon had shared a bunch of websites of other committees on status of women that I then looked through and sort of collated categories of priorities that all of them have sort of focused on. and start a spreadsheet where we can look at those categories and then either add ideas that we don't see included or um, or say like, oh, I think this should also be a priority for us. And that's sort of a start before we start thinking of like what our survey would address in terms of priorities. Um, and uh, if I wanna share that link, I guess then it don't seem to have chat this time. So I, I guess know, I'm very confused by it. But I will send, send it, it to Michelle. That way we have everything coming from one source and we don't have a giant chain of emails from everyone. Okay, perfect. So we'll get it through that and feel free to edit, like add a comment or a track change saying, um, you know, we should definitely prioritize this or you have questions about what it means. Um we are trying to schedule a meeting in the next two weeks with the committee so that we can sort of figure out a, a plan um, for the next couple of months because I am getting ready to be a little busy with a human being that's coming. Um, so we'll keep you updated on that. But uh, for now, just plan to look at the priorities and sort of make your comments um, within the week if possible. Good luck hey, with the, the new human being. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Our first also that go ahead. No, I was just saying it's our first committee, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, Nate. Congrats. Also, that sounds amazing. That sounds like y'all have really done good work. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, um, moving to the diversity committee. Yes, hi. Uh, the diversity committee has finalized our presentation on the diversification of Norwalk boards and commissions. Thank you to everybody who helped out with that. Um, the presentation includes lots of data, it includes the benefits of diversity and uh, recommendations on ways we can go about uh, moving forward with the city to try to diversify our boards and commissions. Uh, we have a meeting with Alicia Kang, who's the chief of staff on Thursday to discuss it. And I'm very excited about that. Um, and that's our update. And we'll report back. Great. Any questions for Sharon? Oh, so sorry. I did want to mention I did send it to everybody that was not on the committee. So uh, please feel free to review it. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, you know, either send me an email or give me a call. Thanks, hey, Sharon. Okay, diving into new business. The first one is discussion and motions on Center for Youth Leadership presentation. So Anna, I'll let you take the lead on any potential motions. Um, but if okay. I probably want to, we probably want to start with discussion. Are there any points of discussion that anyone wants to bring up? Yeah, what I, I think my first question is, is this something we want to take up now or collect data on and then make a determination or wait till we've gotten more from the research committee. So I think yeah. that would be our first question. So what do we think? I, I would say that, oh, sorry, am I supposed to raise my hand first? <laughs> sorry, raise my hand. Um, so with the research committee, this is something that I think the survey is gonna take a little bit of, well, time planning, but also time coordinating with the city in terms of making sure that we're not duplicating efforts with other committees. So I would argue we won't, we don't wait for the research um, 
And then on a per that's like from the research committee point of view, from on a personal committee member, larger committee member point of view, I'm I think this falls very clearly into our mission. Um and I wonder if there's a way to simultaneously get more information from you know the things that Bob was saying, like the cost analysis, um, but also like work on a list of which buildings are we talking about, um, which sites, um, who are the stakeholders that we would have to present to sort of like do our, our own data collection while Bob is sending us more information, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think just to clarify the stakeholders, I think we would probably be starting with the ordinance committee, which is something we're supposed to yeah. do anyway. And we have time to put together something good if we want to take it up. I'm um, sorry, go ahead. Anyone else as Ileana? Yeah, I just wanted to ask who would be the right person in the city to give us an inventory of all the public facilities in the city so we have an idea of volume, like how many school bathrooms, how many office bathrooms and so on, like parks and rec. I think we should have some sort of spreadsheet that lists uh, how many things we're talking about because that will help us calculate budget. Do you, do you have any idea who would be the right contact person for that? Um, one, the school bathrooms are not optional. They're already legislated. Perfect. Um, so we're only worried about city buildings. The city ones, yeah. Michelle? Yeah, I was going to say, I think it would be smart to put together the questions in a spreadsheet. I think there's multiple people who could be helpful in that situation. But I think, you know, once we know all the questions being asked, we can make sure to, to direct you to the right person. Okay, I think. Um, and I can't remember if it was Sarah or Claudia who had their hands up first. So I'll go with Sarah since Claudia I just gestured. follow up, Anna, to something you said. If you could just provide like quick um, explanation of what you mean by the ordinance committee. Obviously, you don't mean a subcommittee of our committee. You mean a larger committee of the city. The city. And do they meet like regularly or like what? How does that work? So the Common Council has committees. Um, one Anna, of which Anna, is Anna, the I hate to. Yeah, actually, Shannon would be a much better person to answer that. Sorry, I was the chairman of the ordinance committee, so I'll just I'll, I'll insert myself. Um, so the the ordinance committee is part of the common council. Um, it meets once a month. They take on you know things that need to be put forward as an ordinance. We need to. It's a process. It needs to go to the committee. The staff person on the ordinance committee is the legal department. So they have to take a bite at it, and then the whole whatever you propose as a new or revised ordinance has to go to public hearing. So there's several steps involved in the ordinance committee. Um, and we need to make sure like we have all our research and everything ready to roll or we'll hit a complete dead stop when it gets there. Um, Cause then they'll go down, you know and start working on their own research which is part of it but we wanna make sure we have a full presentation ready at that time. Awesome. Glad we have Shannon here. <laughs> and it's a wonderful resource. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that's, I don't, I don't know that this, I don't know that this needs to be an ordinance. If the committee decides that that's the route we want to take, I'm completely on board. But an ordinance is more of like how to govern the city and the responsibilities of, you know, the, of the residents of the of city hall to the residents i just feel like this could be i don't know uh, a city policy yeah p city mm. policy and also i want to be careful we don't go down too far of a rabbit hole forcing small businesses to do this too i completely get the schools absolutely public buildings yes absolutely but we need to do our homework to figure out where we're going to you know, kind of draw the line too. Okay. I, I think that makes a lot of sense talking about it as a city policy rather than an ordinance, given that it would yeah. only affect city buildings. And especially like if, well, I guess the schools are out of our hands. The schools have to do it. You know, not that 
I just don't want to see us waste unnecessary time by forcing it through ordinance if it doesn't need to go that route. Yep. Claudia? Thanks. Um, yeah, Shannon, that was super helpful. Thank you very much. And I mean, I agree. I think that this is, you know, as you said, Sharon, I think really, I stand, I think this is great. I think it would be a great thing to do, especially while we're sort of trying to identify the other issues that we want to take up. Um, I do think I, I would just say in our efforts to try to package it before we present it to the, the key decision makers that we, um, in addition to what others have said in terms of the volume, and I do agree that I would I would personally folk want to see us focus on city buildings as opposed to private businesses, because I think we'll just hit a roadblock and let's get a success under our belt. And I think that would be a good one. Um, and then also to really emphasize what Bob and Rashni said about the education piece. So that we're really talking about like why this is important, why it is an equity issue, why, you know, and um, uh, so that there's, you know, education that goes along with the availability of these items. Christina? Yep, thank you. Um, I echo um, what Claudia just said in some of the, and a lot of what Shannon said as well about, um, sort of knowing where our wins might be, but maybe a, a way to build in the support from private partners is to ask them to, you know, ask them who would want to stand up with us or who would want to be engaged with this. Like we would, we could encourage private businesses to join us in the camp in this campaign or join the Center for Youth Leadership in the campaign. Um, so that might be an opportunity to also identify some private partners who would want to engage that then if we wanted to look at a phased kind of approach to this, then we could say, you know, we've had these companies um, and businesses join us, um, you know, as a, as a conversation. So, and I know we're not talking ideas right now, we're really talking about kind of how we want to and what we might want to vote on in, in support of this, but I just didn't want to lose sight of having that caught in the, in the minutes so we don't forget our trains of thoughts. <laughs> okay, Eliana? I just want to applaud Christina for that idea. Uh, again, I know we'll do some planning later on this, but the fact that we could create some sort of like certification or batch or something that the business can like share on their, you know, social media, something that incentivizes them to bring out the, the female audience and support, you know, the women of Norwalk. I think that is a fantastic idea. So yeah, let's put it on the agenda or in the notes so that we don't forget about it and come back to it. Well, not just female, other genders can also menstruate. Um, You're absolutely right. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so what I'm hearing is uh, we need a list and we need research. Does that about sum us up? Okay, so what I've got is um, we wanted to figure out where we get an inventory of public bathrooms. We want to figure out who we talk to about city policy. We'd love to see what they, what the Center for Youth Leadership and any other people can get us on the cost analysis. We'd probably want to look at the Ann Arbor statute for language and how it's phrased. Um, and we want to figure out an education piece as well as plan for a phased approach where maybe in another phase we um, also incorporate businesses and try and get them. I like the batch idea. Although that's probably getting a little ahead of ourselves, but I love it. Um, so that's a whole bunch of stuff. I hate to be the let's have a committee girl, but that seems like a committee thing. Am I wrong? I, sorry, I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> oh, sorry, Shannon. There's, Go there's, ahead. I know, I know that the names of the committees have changed a little bit from when I was on the council, but there used to be health welfare and public safety and now i think it's like community involvement or something and um dominique is the chair of that i feel like we should maybe partner with them because i, I don't know if the health department is their staff person um or not and i didn't have a chance to look that up this afternoon but maybe we could and in working with them i feel like that's a natural kind of fit that we could all work together and work smarter, not harder. 
and it could come, you know, through that committee too, um, with a little more teeth to it as well. Yeah, and just to clarify, it's the community services and personnel and health. I'm sorry, the community services and personnel committee, and it's um, overseen by the community services department. Okay, Karen. Oh, I, I just agree with Shannon. Uh, yeah, Lamont Daniels runs that and um, the director, he obviously oversees the director of health and you know they all join that. I think it's a great idea for us to meet with community services. Um, do you need a motion to create a, um, a committee? If that's what we wanna do, then yes, that would be the next step. So if- um, If we're finished with oh, discussion okay. at this point. So Claudia, go ahead. Yeah, so just, just uh, I'm just thinking out loud, but it, it, I wonder if, because we have a number of committees and we're not a huge commission, um, might an alternative, and I'm not saying, I'm just, again, thinking out loud, don't know if this is right, but we could either create a committee or you, and a, of that list of tasks that you just read through, we just assign that out amongst ourselves or in, you know, in pairs to try to get some of this done. It's not like we have a multi multitude of, of initiatives that we're trying to move forward. So if we all want to work on this, then why not make this a commission initiative and just divide up the tasks rather than creating a committee who will do that? And I, I mean, I don't know. Or if we feel like, I don't know, if that's, if that's how we need to make the work happen, then so be it. But um, again, I feel like we're not, we're not, we don't have other substantive issues that we're currently working on. So if maybe this is a good way to make it happen. I don't know. Ileana? I, I love the idea of everybody working together, but as a uh, project manager, I can tell you that unless somebody leads this, nothing's gonna move and we're gonna like just go into the summer brain. So I am happy if everybody collaborates, but somebody needs to own it. Like somebody has to be the driver pushing everybody to get it done. So like if we can pick a person or somebody wants to nominate themselves to lead this, I think then we can make it work all together without having to create a subcommittee. Are there other thoughts on this? They're both great ideas and we lead to the same thing, except yes, you, you do need someone to own it and say, and, and be responsible to get everyone else um, to do what their piece, otherwise it will uh, not materialize. Okay, I think that makes a lot of sense. So is there someone who wants to own it so we can do it as a big group or shall we make this a committee? If someone wants to co-own it with me, I, I would- I'll, I'll volunteer with you, Chantal. Yeah, we, okay. you and I can drive it together. Yeah. Excellent, okay. Okay. So um, do we want to divide out the parts of this? You listed it already, I think, beautifully, uh, inventory, uh, and we're going to be working with Michelle to find somebody to to help us get that list uh, and coordinate. Um, the other one will be to follow up with the school um, presentation committee and just gather that feedback that they have in terms of costs analysis. Uh, another one that I was thinking is maybe do some research on like, you know, the nearby towns, what about Wilton or Darien? What are they doing? Do they have something in place already um, that we wanna find out about just so that we have a better estimation of costs? And I know that Norwalk has like a much larger population, but at least to have an idea of what's happening in, happening in our surrounding towns. Um, grants, you know, are there any grants in there that we could tap into as a city? And I'm not gonna try to pronounce the name of that big pharma, you know, beauty products company that it's like right in the border of Wilton of Norwalk. Uh, but I mean, something like that. Babe, Beardstorf, Beardstorf. Thank you, yes, thank you. But, uh, that's not the right, yeah. I'm not saying it right, but that's. But <laughs> I've seen, I've seen like free hand sanitizer in different parts of the city that was sponsored by them during the pandemic. Yeah. 
Yeah. So maybe it's an opportunity for us to find something similar, you know, where yeah. we can get like a next number of inventory and then just launch a pilot program, do some do some feedback afterwards and support that, use that data to support right, like gift, along. gift in kind. Yeah. Okay. So who wants to um, handle grants and fund research? Claudia? I'll do, I'll, yeah, I'll do that. <clears throat> I mean, if, if there's like a grant writing opportunity, I will seek some support just because that could be but I can do some initial like research and see just kind of what you're talking about, Ileana, see who else is around. And a lot of the nonprofits where I've worked have also gotten gifts in kind from especially like pharmaceutical or kind of, you know, hygiene products of different kinds. So, yeah, I can take a lead on that. Okay. Um, I'd like to volunteer to look up language if that's okay. Um, I like looking at ordinances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to volunteer for the cost analysis piece and follow up with the school to get that information in a couple of spreadsheets. Okay. I can volunteer for. So, um, oh, sorry. Go. Should I keep going? Please, just in, while I finish taking notes. <laughs> Since we want to keep track of who's doing what. Okay, go ahead. Um, just researching like localities that near us that might have done something like this, either privately or publicly. Um, and any other like Bob mentioned period dot, what is it called? Period movement? The period yeah. movement, yeah. Yeah, so like uh, uh, similar movements like that, that could maybe give us some resources or might have toolkits. Um, and just as a question, do we like send this all to Ileana and Chantal when we have it? Like the information. Ileana, Chantal, yeah. do you have a preferred sure. method? I mean, I, I, I volunteered to project manage it and, and chair and like chase everyone and make sure that we're we're aligned. So I can do that. So if you want to get that to me and I can put a spreadsheet together, absolutely. Yeah, send it to me and to Ileana. So yeah. I don't, I'm not a dead member. I know. So between Chantal and I will be chasing everyone. Yeah. Okay, so for the bathrooms inventory and who we talk to, Michelle, would you be able to, since you're already in City Hall? Or ask around? Obviously, you do not have yeah. the bathrooms inventory. Sure, absolutely. Okay, um, the ADA people, uh, it used to be Darlene, I'm not sure who's covering ADA. They might actually have a list of bathrooms from their. Um, city analysis so that might be a useful starting place and we need someone to handle the education component sorry oh. is this different from what i'm doing in terms of finding the resources to mobilize like an initiative kind of overlapping i think you yeah. can probably Certainly take that overlap. one yeah. Yeah, yeah overlapping she can do yeah. I mean, it would be like pushing it together in, in easily readable format, like testimony. Got it. Okay. Okay. I think that was all the thing phase one, correct? All right. So, Ileana and Chantel, did y'all have notes on who's doing what, or do you want me to eat this to you? You're mute. I would love it if you could share it with me. I was hoping to go into the notes of the call and then just get it. I, do, I took notes as well. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And I'll I'll schedule some time and ideally we have we'll we'll present some advancement uh, on the next meeting. Okay. Okay. This is very exciting. All right. All right. Um, and is it okay if every with everyone if I'm in touch with Bob Casienda and let them know what we're doing? Okay. I assumed that way, but it's nice to let them know that they're making a difference without okay. having to read our minutes, which I imagine are dull. Um, okay, great. This is very exciting. And thank you all for volunteering. This will make life easy. And project managing, the hardest part.
Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't think at this point we actually have to have any uh, motions. We'll put this on old business and then we visit where we're at in each meeting. Perfect. Good. Okay, the next discuss the next new business item is question for other commission on the status of women groups. And this uh, intersects with what Sarah was talking about, I believe, with the research committee. Um, so I think this was put on the agenda just to fo as a follow up from last meeting in May in case there were specific questions. Uh, but it sounds like Sarah, you're already tackling that. And basically the follow up was, um, I just have a few contacts for um, of commission of, of groups in Virginia and we can use that spreadsheet if you'd like once it's finalized. Um, that way um, we can ask them certain questions. So happy to work with you on that once those questions are, are done. All right, I didn't realize my hand was raised. Um, Michelle, that would be, I think the plan was for you to also come to our research committee meeting, but we haven't had it yet. Um, but if, I don't know if those committees, I'm assuming they don't have websites or anything like that. Um, I think they might actually. Okay, if you wanna share those with me, that would be really helpful. Um, sure. We're getting started. And then um, I think we were, if anyone, if there's a contact in any of them, if they did focus groups or surveys with the community, um, just to pick their brain about that would be really helpful. Okay. That sounds good. Um, and we can recap maybe via email, make sure that we're asking them the exact right questions and then um, move forward. But yeah, I will send the research committee those websites. Thank you. As a starting point. Sure. Um, I'm not on the research committee, but one other thing, if we're talking to the other commissions, I'd be interested in hearing what things were easiest and hardest and what sort of pushback they got. Because as Claude pointed out earlier, we're a new committee. It's good if we can get some wins under our belts. So I'd also be interested in hearing that from the list of priorities that they're putting together. Yeah, I imagine something to consider is the con the lo locality context where like something that might be easy for our town would be hard for theirs, et cetera. But yeah, we'll definitely ask and see what they say. Any further addition? Claudia, I can't tell if you're about to ask a question or just, okay. All right, what's next? Discussion and motions on the creation of a potential statement committee. And okay, so this is from this time we were talking about having a committee that could respond quickly and issue statements uh, to the news without having to come before the full group. Um, if we have something in the news that requires an immediate statement, what do we think about doing that? Anna, can you repeat that? Sorry, I just wanna make sure I'm... So we had discussed last time the fact that oftentimes the news cycle does not coincide very well with our meetings and that things may happen in the news that we want to issue statements on without having a meeting. Um, so this was to follow up on that discussion and see, do we want to form a committee that can issue statements uh, on active news items more quickly than perhaps the full commission can move? I do like, sorry, I should raise my hand. <laughs> there I got raise my hand. I do like the idea of that, but I also like the fact that this committee is intentionally diverse in its representation. And I would want, I don't know, I, I'd rather, I would, I would hate to see us put out a statement that then maybe we're not all comfortable with. So I, I, I'm just speaking off the top of my head. Um, but I would have, I would like to think that if it's an issue of such importance that we would all be willing to jump on a 30 minute call to, to brainstorm a statement. I, I guess I'm just thinking out loud. I'm not saying yes or no, but, um, I guess I'd, I'd rather, 
honor the integrity of the diversity of this committee by having a joint conversation. I don't know, just a thought. I, like I said, I'm speaking. Off oh, actually, it's a great idea. It's it's a great idea to hear everybody's uh, point of view instead of putting out the point of view of two people that may not represent the whole uh, community co co committee's view on whatever the uh, issue is. I, I am with you on that. I see other hands raised, but I'm just going to make a point real quick. We can't have a 30 minute call without FOIA. That's yeah. Um, we would need to post a special meeting agenda. We would need to post it within 24 hours. We'd have to be open to public comment. We'd be mm -hmm. recorded. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. I, I still agree with my thought of it yeah. being. I just want to. Thank you. No, that's important. Yeah. Okay. Yvonne? And yes, if I recall correctly, the conversation we had, um, there was an idea of having a couple of people lead when something comes um, our way and also make it like a rotating committee. So everybody had the opportunity to participate. I don't know if I'm recalling correctly, but that was discussed, but it's a question of who's willing to be on it when because. Right. Right. So, you know, in order to get all the voices in, I think, you know, I mean, I'm sure the people that get started, if we decide we're going to go that route, could find a way to communicate with the rest of the commission real quick. It's mo mostly a matter of the group um, keeping an eye out for things that we um, should be having a voice in as a commission. Okay, Ileana, you had your hand up, but it looks like you put it down. FOIA? It was the FOIA stuff, yeah. Yeah, uh, Sarah? I'm just wondering if anyone actually feels comfortable like drafting a like a very first draft. Like if you have experience having to do this for your organization or anything like that, that would be willing to do the first draft. And then we can have a process where we like send out an email and say within the 24 hours, please make comments. Um, I mean, we live in a collaborative online world, so I think it's possible. I totally agree that we should all have a say in what's being said, um, but we have to get started somewhere. Um, comments also? Uh, just to be clear, any comments we made would be freedom of information and we'd have to navigate how to preserve that or just have everyone make comments and then come to the meeting and make the comments. Claudia? Yeah, I think that, that I think that's a really good suggestion because it can be, I mean, I do like the idea, Christina, of having as collaborative an approach as possible, but I think um, there's also something, it's hard to start from zero as a group to draft something. So I think that that idea of having like an initial statement or at least kind of maybe the, the bullet points that could roll into a statement and then circulate that maybe like even through Google Docs so that we're, we can work on it kind of simultaneously. Um, no, why not? Oh, yeah. So that would be available for what Google Docs can't be turned over or what? what's the issue? Um, I would have concerns about Google Docs because while drafts are not FOIAable, um, if it's Google Docs and we're all making changes on it, it becomes a meeting functionally or. Uh, okay, so anyway, I, I so whatever the format is, I'm just thinking of a way that it's not via email and an attachment on an email where like, you know, Chantal's working on one version and I'm working on another version and our collaborative versions are missing each other in the ether, you know? So whatever that is, whether if it's not Google Docs, then some kind of, or we have a, you know, a series of like, you know, Chantal works on it, passes it to Yvonne, passes it to Claudia to, you know, some way of streamlining and ensuring everybody who wants to feed in on it has that opportunity. I, I mean, we need to give it some thought, but um, because that could also get really clunky, but I, I just wanna, yeah, be as inclusive as possible, yet also streamline. So I don't know exactly the best way to do it. Sharon? Yeah, um, I mean, I would think that the, the voice should start, or you it should start with the chair and the co-chair or vice chair, 
And then you guys pick who is most qualified to write a response and whatever the subject is, because we have intentionally picked really diverse people with very different backgrounds. Um, and then go from there. I can't, you, you can send a draft out and people can say, yes, I approve or I don't. And then we could have a meeting with the draft as a basis and make edits so we get everyone's input. Yes. Um, Ileana? I'm just wondering how does the Common Council handle like collaborative documents? Like, do they have like Microsoft Teams via the city or because, I mean, as a commissioners, as commissioners, would we have an alternative of getting like a Norwalk City mail and then use the, their whatever collaborative tools they use on the council? I think we've lost the council member who can answer that. Oh, great. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll leave it to, we can ask it later, but I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know if we should or can as commissioners, uh, but I mean, if they're using collaborative documents that are obviously, you know, like being uh, are under FOIA's, you know, legislation, then why not see or consider if we can work like that, make it easier for everyone? Yeah, from what I know from other commissions, and that is not the council and it's not at all the same as the council, so this is less useful. Okay. A lot of times this handles uh, the initial stuff, it's draft, and then in meetings they discuss. Okay. That is not necessarily all true, and I think we'd probably need more information. Okay, thank um, you. Christina? So just to, to, the, to the point that I raised and, and the feedback, I absolutely agree that having a draft to respond to is a good start, and I think that addresses the issue of making sure that the um, the vo all the voices on the the council have on the commission have an opportunity to respond because the other piece of it is if we get something from if we get a draft on a Monday and your deadline who's ever you know your and say as chair your deadline is Tuesday we have to care enough to be able to get our response to you back to by Tuesday um, and because it being an important issue I think we'd all do that so I I appreciate that. Um, suggestion of having something to respond to within all discoverable guidelines. <laughs> so that, I, you know, I think that's an, that's, I appreciate that. Okay. I thought, and um, I'm going to say what I thought, and then y'all tell what you think. I thought Sharon's idea seemed the most likely to get us where we need to go, where the chair and the vice chair uh, kind of send email asking who would be best suited to draft something and then they draft it and then we have a meeting based on the draft. Um, that was my opinion. Y'all may have different opinions. So what do y'all think? I agree. I keep looking for a thumbs up emoji, but they don't have it in. I know form. I was looking for them earlier. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, so I agree do we as well. Have, okay, so do we have a motion? Ileana moves to uh, have a setup where the chair and vice chair uh, delegate the draft, and then we have um, or take the draft, depending, and then we have a meeting, a special meeting, presumably. Okay, do we have a second? I second. Claudia. I second. Sorry, Sharon, Claudia, you. Sorry, Chantal, Claudia won. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, y'all have done really well at everyone making motions regularly. No one's winning here. Um, all in favor? Uh, sorry, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Where are we on the agenda? Motion to adjourn. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry, who got it? I was looking at the agenda. Christina, you got it? Uh, no, I just have a, a quick comment. Shannon and I, and, and I oh. I don't, so Mike, I'm sorry, this is old business. I do not like to 
um, have balls dropped, but I don't also don't want to forget it. Um, at the next meeting, Shannon and I can report out on our conversation with Ken Hughes about fields. Um, our meeting with him did answer a lot of our questions and didn't leave us with any burning. Um, now let me rephrase that. Can you strike? <laughs> Sorry. It didn't leave us with any issues that we felt needed to be explored further at that given time. So, um, but I feel I realized I missed the meeting right after that and didn't report back. Oh, to Shannon you. reported. Oh, Shannon good. Reported. Yep. Okay, so then it's done. We're good. Thank you. <laughs> Eliana. I was just going to give a quick update. I live very close to the fields and the birds have migrated to the cemetery down by the community college. So there have not been a lot of ghosts. Whatever they did, it worked for now. So good news. They, they've gone elsewhere. Yvonne? Um, yes, I have a question. Do we have a meeting in August or was that discussed at all? Given that we have, sorry, it is fickle to skip a meeting in August or July. Um, given how much we have proportioned out, I think it might make sense to have a meeting in August and other people disagree. Okay, so don't cancel the August meeting. Sorry, Claudia. Sorry, I, I miss it. Are you suggesting that we do have the meeting or we do not have the meeting? That we do. Okay, that would be the 15th of August. I will be away and at a college visit with my son. So I would not be available on the 15th, just to say, but if you have, you can still get a quorum with. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna be here either. I'm gonna be traveling for work right. on well, the year. We'll figure out if we've got okay. quorum and then we'll decide if we have an August meeting. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? Who say me, me? Okay, Ileana got the motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second, Sarah. Sarah. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? All right, thank you all for coming out. And thank you. Thank you. See you. Have thank a good you. night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Happy summer. <laughs> yes.